Good morning, good morning. Sorry about any delay. We have had a little glitch with accessing LinkedIn on this system. Okay, Annex 8 to CLP. Now, we all know that Annex 8 to CLP has inadvertently been brought into UK law. And last week, uh, DHSC, the Department of Health and Social Care, sent a letter to various trade bodies who'd been involved in speaking to them, saying there's going to be a consultation in 12 over a 12 week period, but we're not telling you when yet. And at the end of that consultation, a decision will be made on whether or not to retain Annex 8 or to get rid of it. So we're in limbo for that reason. Technically, the uh, law as it stands is that Annex 8 applies, which means mandatory poison centre notification. And that includes using the all the data in Annex 8 and the IUCLA format and technically doing it via the portal. Although we know for Northern Ireland, you have to, to create the IUCLA file and then email it to NPIS. Now, in the letter, HSC were quoted as saying they might take enforcement action. What Reading between the lines on this, I think it's they might if there's an incident. So it's not necessarily they're definitely going to do it. But we need to think carefully about what the options are, depending on what bit of duties, what your liabilities are within the UK and what you've already done. So first of all, if you have already notified all of the mixtures that are PCN compliant on the Northern Ireland protocol, which is, as I already said, email, yeah, I know it's unsafe, but email your IUCLID file into NPIS, you're covered. You don't need to do anything. You're fully compliant. Now, if you haven't done that, but you have sent your SDSs in, technically you're complying with the old system. You are providing the data to them and that you may consider that to be good enough because at least technically you've complied. And if HSC were to enforce, if there was an incident, what could they do? You've given them all the information you can. So that's a good option if you've already done it. Now, you can decide, well, I've also done it to the EU and I've I've got these IOCLIP files, I may as well send them in, if you like. But I would suggest that might be a nice to have. If you haven't done any notification at all, then you basically have two options as I see it, because it, if you want to comply, it's, it, it is that legal obligation at the moment. And they are, you can either get your IUCLID files sent across if you have them. And if, and it's a big if, you trust the email system not to corrupt them, not to cause any problems. And also you're happy with that degree of um, e extreme detail on your formulation going across via email to somebody you don't know. Now, if you're not happy with that, then sending the SDS is the way to go. And sending the SDS is also the quickest and the easiest version while we wait to see what happens. Now, I've put all this together in today's email newsletter. I'm putting a link on our website, one of our websites at ghsclassificationcourses.com. Goes into it in a bit more detail. And, you know, you, you don't necessarily want to give your formulation information away, particularly when that link is unstable. So the SDS may turn out to be a good compromise because at least you're notifying and you're complying with the information that has to go to NPIS. But at the same time, you're not going to all the work and effort of producing a new IUCLID file if you don't have them, or you're not sending an IUCLID file through what is probably or maybe an insecure um, source. So do not panic over this. Now, if you're feeling lucky or you've got... Um, very low hazard mi hazardous mixtures. I know that sounds like a contradiction in terms, but you know what I mean. There is a range of hazards that require poison centre notification. Uh, it's all physical and all health. You don't need environmental. You don't need EUH statements only. So there's a range of what you need. So you might have something that's irritating to eyes or you might have something that's fatal if inhaled. You know, let, let's face it, there, there, there is a difference between these things. So if you're at the lower end and you haven't had any problems with your mixtures in the past, you might go, you know what, I'm going to chance it and I'm not going to notify anything. And that's down to you. Do you feel lucky, punk? But what seems to have changed with the letter that's come out is that there's the potential for enforcement. And the letter itself does talk about, um, 
you know, there's a link to the enforcement and the HSE are quoted as saying, you know, they'll be pragmatic about it. So um, doing nothing is still an option, at least until the um, all this um, um, consultation and everything till decisions taken. But if you do want to send your SDSs for the mixtures that PCN applies to, that is more of an insurance policy, I would suggest. And you don't need to spend money doing it. You don't need to spend a great deal of effort doing it. Um, and it's kind of maybe in industry terms, the best thing to do where we are now. So don't feel that you absolutely must comply with the full detail of Annex 8. But you can do if your appetite for risk is such that you don't want to be out of compliance ever anywhere. Bearing in mind that for a lot of businesses, going through the Annex 8 thing is a lot of work and a lot of effort and a lot of expense. And the risk of doing that now is that you might find out that you don't need to do it if it's not brought into the UK. So I hope that gives you an idea of the options that are there. Like I say, the link has gone in to our newsletter where I go into in more detail. The other thing that I wanted to say about our newsletter is for some weird reason, I usually have a, a link where you can sign up to it if you've found it online. It's not working. So um, I'm just going to put the sign up link in case you are interested in um, signing up to weekly emails on this type of topic and about chemical safety, chemical incidents, chemical philosophy. Um, oh, and don't forget the weekly recipe. Um, I'm just trying to type and talk. So that's the sign up link as well. If you do find it useful, obviously, with it being an open access newsletter, if it's useful, share it widely. Um, and uh, so that's the, the work side of things. Now, in reasons to be cheerful, where we are is last week, I mentioned Dad's Army, followed like two days later by Frank Williams, who played the vicar, dying at the ripe old age of 90. So this week, our reasons to be cheerful is an interview with him. Uh, and it's a really, really lovely thing. Um, it was done by a, a filmmaking graduate and he offered it to the BBC and they turned it down. And it's it's really nice interview. It's got lots of clips with Dad's Army and what it was like behind the scenes. And it's just a, a, a joy to watch. Uh, so... Um, Farewell to Frank Williams of Dad's Army, just Ian Lavender next. And I hope mentioning him in this week's newsletter hasn't <laughs> isn't going to cause him any problems. But he is quite a bit younger, so I think we should be okay. So I hope you found this useful. Uh, sorry it's been a bit longer video than normal. Um, and, uh, you know, if you've got any worries about this, even after you've read the newsletter, feel free to drop me an email or message me on LinkedIn and I'll see if I can help you. But the main thing is, don't panic. You have options. Take care of yourselves. Have a wonderful weekend. See you next week if we're spared. Bye.